We need to talk about Lewis Hamilton and George Russell. During the 2023 Singapore Grand Prix, both Lewis Hamilton and George Russell were in contention for victory. On lap 45, during the virtual safety car period, Mercedes double stacked their drivers, giving them a set of new medium tyres. The instruction was simple, chase down the top three and win the race. Both cars cleared Ferrari's Charles Leclerc fairly easily and all seemed to be going to plan. However, no one accounted for the racing mind of leader Carlos Sainz. Sainz deliberately slowed down to allow McLaren's Lando Norris to get DRS. In effect, he was giving himself a buffer against the fast charging Mercs. Without this tactic, Sainz would have been a sitting duck on older tyres. Russell was unable to get past Norris and to make things worse, Hamilton was directly behind and quicker. Going into the last lap, all four drivers had a chance of victory. Russell was pushing Norris all the way until he clipped the wall at turn 10 and crashed into the barriers. His race was over and Hamilton was the one who made the podium, not Russell. After the race, it all kicked off amongst the Mercedes fan base. Many Hamilton fans contended that as Hamilton was faster, Mercedes should have ordered the cars to switch, or at least split the strategy. In their post-race debrief, James Allison explained why this wasn't an option. So the trade of a potential upside of a 1-2, potential downside of a couple of championship points, that made it feel like a really good bet, a really good hand to play. So that's what we decided to do. We decided to play it for both cars because both cars had that chance of getting right the way through our competitor teams and securing that 1-2 for Mercedes. Now, you could argue that George had more to lose because he was in P2 and Lewis uh, further back, better to, to gamble. And I guess that's behind the question of should we have split the strategies? But I think that probably underestimates a key point. George was massively up for this. George felt he could get the job done. George would have been absolutely furious not to be given that chance. And from our point of view in the calculating seats, it looked like there was a very good chance that, that he would be able to get the overtakes down on, on new rubber. So from our point of view, absolutely worth the gamble. And you know what? He's absolutely right. Russell had been the quicker driver all weekend up to that point. He easily beat Hamilton in qualifying. He had been the quicker driver all through the race. Why shouldn't he be allowed the chance to go on and win? The simple answer from some corners of the Hamilton fan base was this. Because it's Lewis. This is where I find myself at odds with some of the Hamilton fan base. Let me say it again. Because it's Lewis. So what if it's Lewis? If you believe that Lewis should get preferential treatment simply because his name is Lewis Hamilton, then you fundamentally misunderstand how Mercedes work. Let me explain. Since their return to the sport in 2010, Mercedes have never operated with a one and two driver dynamic. They have the same philosophy as Ron Dennis did at McLaren. Have the best drivers available to you and let them race. It gave us three fantastic title fights from 2014 to 16. They even let Valtteri Bottas race Hamilton in 2019 and 20. Even when they won the championship as Braun in 2009, they let their drivers race. There have been three seasons where Mercedes could not do this. 2017, 2018 and 2021. And what is the common theme there? Challenge from the outside. Sebastian Vettel in the Ferrari on two occasions and Max Verstappen, of course, in 2021 with Red Bull. Mercedes knew they had to back a horse and very quickly it was clear that Hamilton was the play. However, at the start of a new season, everything resets to zero and you start again. If at any point it was clear that Bottas was the call and not Hamilton, I have no doubt they would have made that choice. And in this current era, Mercedes are not competing for championships. The team aren't worried about who the number one and number two is. They're interested in maximizing their performance, scoring as many points as possible, and learning what they have to do better 
in order to compete in future seasons. Because Mercedes are only interested in one thing, winning world championships. Now look, I know what you're all thinking. Baxter, don't simplify our argument. It was obvious Lewis was faster. That's why we wanted them to switch. And I get that, I get it. But I would counter by saying that, yeah, Lewis was quicker, but would he have done better in the face of the tactics from Carlos Sainz? I don't think he would have done, maybe P2, but who knows? Look, I, I get it. We all want Lewis to do well, and it's frustrating to see a potential win slip away, especially as we haven't had a win for Lewis since Saudi Arabia 2021. I also admire the passion, devotion, and loyalty of many of his fans. Of all the fan bases in the sport, not many come close to ours. Maybe only Verstappen and Leclerc. Maybe. Maybe Norris as well. Yet I have to call out the belief that Lewis has the right to be given preferential treatment at all costs because he is Lewis Hamilton. That he is the undisputed number one at Mercedes. You have to earn that right. And during the Singapore Grand Prix, up until the last stint, he hadn't done that. One of the reasons I love Mercedes so much is the fact that they let their drivers race and allow them to compete. Imagine how boring 2014 and 2016 would have been. I don't want them to go down the route of Michael Schumacher and Ferrari, where they insert clauses into the contracts of the other driver that basically say, if Michael is behind you, you are obligated to move aside. I don't want that. Look, if you're okay with that, if that's what you want, fine, we can agree to disagree. But I would be willing to make a substantial bet that Lewis would probably feel the same as I do. If I was a betting man, of course. And I also want to take issue with some of the treatment of George and his fans. Many have been critical of George and his attitude, claiming he's only interested in beating Lewis, only out for himself and will look for team orders to benefit him any chance he gets. Of course George wants to beat Lewis. <laughs> He's a racing driver and the ultimate benchmark of your performance is your teammate. I have no doubt that George would want to beat anyone who was in the other car to him. Yet look, it carries more weight because the other guy is Lewis Hamilton. But I don't see this as an issue. If it means he has to put himself first sometimes, then fine, do it. We all saw what happened at Zandvoort last year. All racing drivers do it. Just because George is teammates with Lewis doesn't mean he has to play by a different set of rules. And look, there were those that would question whether George would move aside for Lewis in a title fight if Lewis was the chosen number one. I have no doubt that he would do that because George is loyal to Mercedes and yeah, he may not like it and he may want to be the one getting the calls, but if he's told to move aside, I'm fairly certain he would do it. The abuse leveled at George and his fans has been unacceptable, and I urge anyone from Team LH to do better. Debate and disagreement are fine, it's a healthy part of fandom, but we must not stoop to the levels that some went to in the aftermath of Singapore. We are all one big Mercedes family at the end of the day. Families fight we must unite together behind the team and hope that they can get back to the front, back into title winning contention and take the fight to Red Bull. Because my God, we need some competition in 2023. Look, that's that's my little soapbox over. Uh, I wanted to get that out there just ahead of the Japanese Grand Prix because Lord knows what's going to happen this weekend. Probably Red Bull back at the front. And look, I'm going to post a few more videos, more like this, not maybe as many race reviews as I have done, um, but we'll see what happens. But if you want to see more of my content, then it's very simple. Please do hit the subscribe button below. We've seen some really good growth uh, in the in the last few weeks, and uh, I, I'm hoping, hoping we can continue that. Uh, and if you want to talk to me about this, just leave a comment below. It's, it's fine. You know, obviously keep it respectful, but... You know, We've just got to we've got to do better. We've got to have healthy discourse, not just deep rooted, entrenched tribalism. We've got to listen and understand other people's viewpoints. 
that's it for now guys until next time stay safe and i shall speak to you all very very soon Thank you.